Well, good morning and welcome to Newtown Square Presbyterian Church. Pastor Gene is away for the day, so I have the pleasure and the honor of leading worship this morning. There are no announcements, so the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. sovereign how majestic is your name in all the earth you have set your glory above the heavens when i look at your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars that you have established what are human beings that you are mindful of them mortals that you care for them you have made them a little lower than god and crowned them with glory and honor O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
Gracious and loving God, we know you have chosen us from the beginning of time to be in relationship with you. And so we gather to praise you, to honor you, and to acknowledge you as our one true God, whom alone we worship and adore. May we hear your voice alone as we turn to you in humility and trust this day through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, and God's mercy and grace endure until the end of the age. And so we approach God with confidence, first confessing our sins silently, and then joining together in our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know how hard it is to keep company with our fears and sorrows, our storms and clouds. We are guilty of rushing through life, looking for the bright days, the sunny experiences, and clear skies. And then when the difficult days do come, we quickly lose patience and hope. Forgive us for those times we feel you have let us down or when we believe you are there for us too late to make a difference. Forgive us for those times we cut you off and lose hope. Breathe upon us and lift us up with the spirit of life. Embolden us to follow you in all that we do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Well, hi, boys and girls. Have you ever been through something difficult and you wondered where God was? Maybe you lost a loved one or a pet and you wondered why you had to go through that hard time. Well, the people from our Bible story this morning thought the same thing. Their names are Mary and Martha, and they had a brother named Lazarus who got sick. So they called on Jesus to help make him better. But Jesus didn't do that. He actually did something even greater, and we're going to learn about that this morning in Sunday school. But I want you to remember this. When life gets hard, it's not because God wants us to suffer. It's because he has a plan so much greater and better for us than we could ever understand or imagine. And here's the other great thing about it. Jesus walks with us. We are never alone when we go through difficult times. So remember that and cling to that. Know that there is a greater plan and Jesus does everything for you out of his love for you. And don't forget to join me at 11 a.m. for Sunday school to hear the rest of our Bible story. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for who you are. When life is easy, help us to rejoice in you. When life is hard, help us to cling to you. In your name we pray, amen. Well, our reading this morning comes to us from the New Testament in the book of John, chapter 11. And I will be reading excerpts from verses 1 to 44. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the son of God may be glorified through it. 
Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were there with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so they may believe you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, I ask this morning for you to be with us so that your message is sent and you are glorified. In your name we pray. I want you to think of a good friend or a special family member you have in your life. What would you do if they became gravely ill? You'd probably take them to the doctor or the hospital and ask the physician to do everything in their power to make them better, right? Well, that's exactly what Mary and Martha did when their brother Lazarus was sick. See, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were good friends of Jesus. They trusted him. They shared meals with him. And Mary respected Jesus so much that she anointed him with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. So when Lazarus became ill, the one person Mary and Martha knew they could turn to for help was Jesus. They believed Jesus would heal Lazarus and make him well. But Jesus didn't come to their aid when they asked. In fact, he stayed where he was for two days before coming to help them. Did he not care about Lazarus's health? I mean, what was Jesus thinking? When Jesus did not immediately set out for Bethany and heal Lazarus, I'm sure Mary and Martha doubted Jesus. Perhaps they questioned if he cared for Lazarus's well-being. Have you ever been in a predicament where you doubted Jesus? Perhaps you're like Mary and Martha, where you've questioned Jesus' plan. 
You may have asked, why, Lord? Where were you when I needed you? You may have asked him to do certain things for you and gotten upset when he didn't answer your prayers the way you wanted him to. But Jesus rarely does what we expect him to do. Jesus is not predictable, and that's what makes him extraordinary. See, Jesus' plan wasn't to heal Lazarus from his illness. It was to raise him from the dead to bring God glory. Because Jesus has power over sickness, life, and death. By not answering Mary and Martha's prayers as they wished, he was asking them to trust him. And he asks the same thing of us. He certainly asked that of me this year. In September and in February, I lost two family members to COVID. And life hasn't always been easy or joyful since their passing. My godfather, George, and my uncle, Gary, were very strong in their faith. So I questioned why they were taken so tragically after only being diagnosed with COVID and being hospitalized for three weeks. I cried out many times to God asking, why did this have to happen? They lived good lives for you, Lord, and didn't deserve this. Well, you know, I'm sure Mary and Martha felt this exact same way when Lazarus died. They questioned why Jesus wasn't there when they called on him, and they grieved for their brother. But although Jesus wasn't physically present with them, he was still with them all along, and he was the conqueror of death. Anytime my grief overtook me this year, I looked to this scripture because it reminded me that my uncle's and my godfather's lives were honored by the Lord, and his power outshined any circumstances they faced before they saw him face to face in heaven. And that is the magnificence and the power of our God. Pastor Jean has been preaching about Jesus' miracles this summer, and we often take those miracles for granted because we want God to move in our favor when life gets hard. But we need to trust him when life is good and when it's difficult. And we need to believe in his wisdom and power with the big and the small things we face. We are gifted by his miracles every day, and he performs them out of his love for us. Over 160 miracles are mentioned in scripture that prove God's omnipotence. Where would we be without him? Where would we be without his miracles? Every single person here has a story of God's miracles, of how God moved in their lives in ways that they didn't expect, and they got to see him do something extraordinary. But sometimes it's difficult to believe that God is still working in our midst. But know that miracles didn't only occur in scripture. God is present still today. Miracles occur all around us and they happen every day. If you need proof, just look at our church. We underwent this massive construction during COVID and everyone I have spoken to I said it's a miracle that it occurred while our church was shut down during the pandemic. This only proves God's amazing timing. He has great things planned for us and only asks that we trust him. That's what he asked of Mary and Martha, and they saw a miracle take place. So what kind of miracles will we continue to see in and around our church when we fix our eyes on him? No, Jesus will not always answer our prayers and perform miracles as we ask. But maybe, like Mary and Martha, we'll just learn to trust Jesus more. Or maybe we'll be like Lazarus, who came out of his dark tomb and went into the world to do great things in Jesus' name. Comedian Tracy Morgan did the latter. See, he rose up out of darkness, but he experienced trials first. In June 2014, the actor and former Saturday Night Live cast member, Tracy Morgan, and his two friends were involved in a limousine bus accident that was hit by a tractor trailer on a Jersey turnpike. 
The tractor trailer driver failed to observe the slow moving traffic ahead of him and swerved into Tracy's limo in an attempt to avoid hitting other vehicles on the road. But the collision caused a chain reaction that included six vehicles in the crash and the accident left Tracy Morgan in a coma for two weeks. During this time, Tracy says he got a glimpse of heaven. He was greeted by his father who said, I'm not ready for you. So finally, after two weeks, Tracy woke up in the hospital and he said, I felt a call to rise up. Doctors worried that he would never walk again, but against the odds, he experienced a miracle and made a complete recovery. Tracy said the experience changed his perspective and made him more aware of God's grace. He said, I live every day trying to do right and make the best of this second chance. He recognized God's miracle and wanted to spread love and kindness to others because of the second chance God gave him at life. So what can we learn from this story? And what can we learn from the story of Lazarus? You might be thinking, look, Sarah, I understand that God performs miracles, but it's not easy for me to trust him because of what I've experienced. I understand that. But the first thing we can learn is that Jesus is never late. His timing is not ours and his ways are not our ways. Jesus did not immediately heal Tracy Morgan. He will not always fix our circumstances as we wish. And he did not immediately go to Bethany when he heard his friend Lazarus was sick. Not because he doesn't care about us, but because he heals us and takes care of us in his own way. Jesus doesn't race against the clock to make us well because he is the great physician and he has complete control over sickness and death. He's not worried about anything because he has power over everything and he brings God glory through his actions. So second, we learn that even though Jesus does have complete authority, he still takes time to comfort his people. When he saw how distraught Mary and Martha were over the loss of their brother, he didn't ridicule them. Even though he knew the outcome, he didn't say to them, stop your crying, I know what I'm doing. No, he comforted them and he wept with them because he loved them. He saw their pain and had compassion on them. And this proves that Jesus is more like us than we realize. In these passages, Jesus exemplifies the authority he has over death, but he also grieves with Mary and Martha over the loss of Lazarus because of his love. The author John records this occurrence in scripture to prove both the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus had many options when he heard about Lazarus's illness. He could have gone to Mary and Martha and healed Lazarus. He could have healed Lazarus from afar simply by speaking the words of life. Or he could have comforted and grieved with Mary and Martha without raising Lazarus from the dead. And yet, Jesus' decision to go to Mary and Martha and heal Lazarus proves that he cares for his people and walks beside them in every aspect of his life. Because Jesus is not stagnant. He always acts in response to our pain and reminds us that we're not alone in our suffering. John also intended to show us that Jesus experiences the same emotions we do, but he also shows us that Jesus is divine. And that leaves us with a choice to make. When we learn about Jesus' divinity, we are called to do something. Is Jesus asking us to trust him like he asked Mary and Martha to do? Or is he asking us to rise up like he asked Lazarus to do? Maybe Jesus is asking you to take a leap of faith and rise up from doubt, fear, and uncertainty and step out in faith to trust exactly who he is. Jesus has ultimate authority over everything, so we must trust his will and believe in his miraculous power so we can be transformed into the newness of life only he can provide.
Mary, Martha, and Lazarus experienced Jesus' miracle firsthand and were better stewards of the faith afterward. So what will our response be? I want to leave you with these lyrics from a song called There Was Jesus by Zach Williams and Dolly Parton. They are, in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried into broken pieces, every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. Jesus is always with us, and he performs miracles in his timing and in his way. I pray we heed these words and cling to Jesus in the good and the hard times. It will not always be easy, but may we be so bold in our faith that we trust his plan and draw closer to him in the process. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all goodness, your love is lavished upon us with reckless abandon and in ways that are both as obvious as a brilliant sunset and as subtle as the gentle rustle of grass. Your faithfulness is never failing and your steadfast love is never changing. Give us the ability to feast on your love so that we are filled to overflowing. Where we are too proud to receive, Lord, fix in us your humble dwelling and soften our spirits. Where we are too fragile to receive, heal our broken dreams, our relationships, our bodies, and our hearts. Whether we walk in the valley of the shadow of death or dance with joyous celebration, your blessed presence sustains us. And for that gift, we are truly grateful. Reshape our experiences into wisdom, our pride into acceptance, our longing into trust, so that we might walk in the light of your truth and the warmth of your presence. And we pray that our leaders would as well, and all the leaders around the globe, that the world might be a place where peace reigns and decisions are based on love, not greed, not fear, and not mistrust. Illuminate the hearts of those who have turned away from you. Give compassion to those who no longer feel at all and cultivate in all of us the desire to let you complete the work you began in us, that we might live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, even as we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, go in peace in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ, knowing he walks beside you in the good and the hard times because he loves you so much. Amen.